So we're in like crunch game of the year time mm -hmm. in which I should be getting to other things. But Xenoblade 3 is a 2022 game that I still haven't finished. That's so perfectly fair. If you remember during my particular phase of calling every game game of the year in the middle of the year, yeah, I may have somewhat facetiously, facetiously referred to Xenoblade Chronicles 3 as 2022 game of the year. Yeah, hey Dave, I think Xenoblade Chronicles 3 might be my 2022 oh, game God. of the year. <laughs> I wonder is that are you just doing like a really smart poker type strategy where when it comes to game of the year like I can kind of tell what Jack is going to favor usually I can kind of tell what Mark is going to favor but you're going to be a real fucking wild card yeah you don't know whether to kill Elden Ring you don't know whether yeah. to kill Live Alive you don't know whether to kill Xenophyte or maybe my game of the year is one I haven't even mentioned yeah maybe I'm just going to come in with left field nobody saves the world your strategy is like if I don't even know what my game of the year is, <laughs> no one can beat me. So I was playing this game before bed last night and I had like one boss battle and I was like, I'll beat this boss and whenever they get me out into the world so I can save, I'll finish up then. And I beat the boss and then that boss, and I'm not lying, was followed by a one hour cutscene. <laughs> oh my God. Full like they, they Metal Gear Solid forged you. Like, like Kojima would be like, Ugh, guys, you, you, you have to have some interactivity in there. Which is, <laughs> they, do it have, down. <laughs> they do have some small bits of interactivity in there so that it's not one continuous cutscene. But yeah. it's basically like you watch a cutscene, you then do like the mildest amount of interaction to watch another 30 minute cutscene. And then you find a boss and there's another 30 minute cutscene. So <laughs> you might think that's the point at which I'm like, no, this probably isn't game of the year for me. Dave, that cutscene was really good. <laughs> They wow. shoved like a really good, cool, almost feature film story just jammed right here. I think I'm 45 hours into this goddamn game now. That's like, that is a lot, my friends. this one hour cutscene on my switch in handheld mode <laughs> it's like when will this end it's not going to end apparently i was like because it was like midnight and i was like i'm gonna get a good night's sleep my sleeping pattern is normal and good at the moment and it's two in the morning by the time i'm finished with all this cutscene nonsense and i came out of that thinking i think this is my game of the year so it's clearly doing something right dave yeah it's i don't know you haven't exactly sold me on it but I, <laughs> i'm i'm glad you like it um I, I tried with Xenoblade 2 because like some of the aesthetics of that is like, oh, I, you know, I'd like to get into that. I'd like to understand why the kids are really into their Xenoblade, but it's just, I don't know. There's something about it. I don't really, I very seldom have the patience anymore for the, you know, what people say about a lot of RPGs where it's like, Oh yeah, once you get, you know, once you get about 10 to 15 hours in, then you really start to figure it out. Once you get 45 hours into this one hour cutscene, that's when you'll really connect with this yeah. one day. <laughs> yeah. Like at least with, with Elden Ring, I, I had the thing where there's like the significant gameplay and combat challenges. So I feel like I'm physically doing something and learning at the same time. Whereas like if it's just a bunch of cutscenes or some turn-based shite, uh, or really, really slow burning intros. I'm just, I, I lose patience very quickly nowadays. Um, mm. And, you know, I'm not going to bury Xenoblade for that. I'm just going to very respectfully say, not for me. Yeah, and it's funny, like, I think Xenoblade 2 is a, a, a perfectly decent old game with a nonsense story, but it has a cool world and absolutely astoundingly good music. Yes. I think Xenoblade 1, quite similar. It's like combat, not all that engaging, but the world's cool. The idea that you're walking on these, what they call Bionises, which the, but you're walking on like the dead corpses of Titans. That stuff, super cool. Great music, story and uh, combat, ugh, take or leave. So for me to come in with the Xenoblade 3, and I didn't even finish Xenoblade Chronicles X on Wii U because it was just... It was so dense with all the stuff you're talking about with like tutorials and systems on systems on systems. And I, I my eyes rolled into the back of my head and I stopped yeah. playing after like five hours. They'll remaster it eventually and probably make it at least somewhat approachable, which they did, I think, with Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition on, on Switch, which is probably how you should play that. It has a lot of the the the, the things they've learned along the way about these games. I, I would be interested in a Xenoblade We Cut the Shit version. 
<laughs> the 10 hour version of the game which is i i look on you know usually people post like the game the movie version which is just all the cutscenes from the game yeah this one 13 hours Fucking 13 hell. hours of cutscenes uh but when I came to this, I, I was not I like I really wasn't expecting to make a game of the year argument for Xenoblade mm. Chronicles 3 because I didn't think any of the other games in the series were anything remotely near game of the year level. And listen, I know it's not going to win our game of the year. <laughs> I know I'm not going to convince the other convince the other four of you that you should put. I think like if you really blasted through this and ignored side content, it's probably still 50 to 60 hours. Not uh, happening with anybody. I don't want to just throw out the phrase over Mark dead body <laughs> but over mark's dead body with a game like xenoblade win game of the year mm. i was like i was only able to squeak the witcher into game of the year because he was up a mountain in china at the time <laughs> oh that's out next week actually isn't it? actually no this week yeah. but as this yeah. comes out the, the the fancy version i can't wait i, uh, I I'm, I'm going to restart that game again because i'm sick I'm mm. sick in the head. Never again. Never mind playing the game of the year candidates. Witcher's no. out. But I, I have, I suppose. Um, actually, no. Before I move, uh, there is an opportunity for segue there. But I do want to ask you one more thing about this because, as we're getting late on into the Switch's life cycle, I'm thinking particularly of Pokemon here, which you made an impassioned defense of last week that I very much enjoyed. Um. <laughs> we're seeing the kind of wear and tear on the limits of the switch hardware how does xenoblade look and perform on switch and is there a substantial difference between docked versus handheld i would say no to the second question it's better docked but handheld is perfectly fine it, it, you won't bump it doesn't look considerably worse than handheld i guess is the way to put it hmm. And uh, in terms of like how it looks, it's the best looking of these games. Yeah, it, it looks a lot better than two. Like two has some real rough points in terms it's of got how it some looks. junk. Whereas this, unlike Pokemon, I think it looks pretty consistent and it it, it does occasionally look pretty, especially in cutscenes. I think character models are very very nice. That mm. have like they go for the anime approach, but I think they've rounded the characters more and they're less like let's focus on shots of boobs, which mm. <laughs> some people might enjoy. To be fair, but but I think it helps that they're not like listen the main character pyra of xenoblade chronicles 2 is just like she's, she's walking boobs that's the entire yeah. character model it's just yeah. boobs and that's that's they're a little more tasteful here some might yeah. suggest uh but i think the game looks pretty good and it, i think they're smart about how it performs like listen it looks like a good looking ps3 game yeah. let's, let's not get like any delusions about how this looks but it does look like a good looking ps3 game not a bad looking ps3 game so is so what you're saying is that you're you're not you're not going to be able to to comment on on the boob physics and you're disappointed <laughs> to say so that's what i'm getting from this i'm devastated because you know these games are known for their thorough over-the-top cutscenes, or they, they have to display all of the boob physics if they do it less <laughs> all but like, of them i really am like i'm not a story guy i'm really not yeah. like I, I i can take and leave even the best stories in most video games like i admire the way the storytelling is done in a game like hades which would yeah. have been my game of the year in 2020. I don't give a shit about the story in Hades. I don't. I like. I appreciate the depth of the dialogue system. I appreciate how the story is integrated into the game mechanics. All that. Don't actually care about the characters really. If you put a push game to shove, I do in this game, and it's very unlike me because like the yeah. the premise of this game is there's these. Uh, a bunch of characters who all have 10 year lifespans and they are only built for war and they die and they feed the war machine and they're revived and they do that cycle and holy shit because like aesthetically very kids game yeah you're like but oh cool anime game it's like no it's about war and depression and what even is life like there's a moment where with these characters who only know 10 year lifespans of war all they do is they're born as like teenagers out of a pod and they go to war and they die and they come back and they go to war and they die and they come back. That is their life. Oh, hey, what's your anime kids game about? Oh, the military industrial <laughs> complex mainly. Yes, yes, it's exactly about that. So when, when they go to like, obviously there's the society that's broken out of that cycle and they go to that society and they just see chilled like babies for the first time. And they're like, well, what the fuck is that? And they're like, they experience the magic of babies. And like literally oh, here. <laughs> one of the characters turns and says, who would like to know how babies are formed? And all of the characters you play as just put their hand up because they have no idea how any of this works because they live in their little war industrial complex. And 
like there's so many like little storytelling touches to that. Like when I finished last night, I put the game down because I had to, I, went, I went to brush my teeth. And one of the, the songs that was playing, like legit just nearly made me cry. Like yeah. a, a flute solo kicked in on one of them. And it, like, it's literally just the background music on one of the areas you're in. And I was just standing there brushing my teeth, just looking at it. It's like, uh, good Lord, that's so beautiful. And I, I think this might be my game of the year, Dave. I, wow. I don't know how it's happened. I really don't. I, I don't understand how Xenoblade Chronicles has wormed its way into my heart to the extent that I'm willing to say it's better than Elden Ring, or at least I prefer wow. it to Elden Ring. I think if you were to say it's better than Elden Ring, that might be a different conversation. Yeah. But in my heart, I think it might be Xenoblade Chronicles. I gotta say, I would put my entire house on the magic of babies being the name for a very bad 1980s sex ed manual for schools. Yeah, with some very outdated information, even for the time. Yes. Um. Holy shit, like you are going to be having an existential crisis on the Game of the Year show at this rate. Because I thought like... You know, we we talk. We the two of us were very much live alive game of the year for a good bit of the summer. Mm. Um, but I did think maybe, given your proclivities, you would you would return to the mean by which I mean Elden Ring, uh, as as game of the year selection. But you're you're actually drifting further and further from the mean as time goes on. <laughs> whereas I'm actually moving closer and closer to an Elden Ring game of the year uh filibuster and um, the more i play of that um so it's yeah game of the year this year i have i it's the year i'm least certain of um so far what's going to win certain categories and that excites me very much um because i, I know it's going to happen because there's going to be a moment where somebody looks at the list of games they have left and they're just going to kill xenoblade chronicles 3 dave and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not going to be able to argue against it. And it's yeah. going to happen. And yeah. it's going to break my heart, Dave. It's going to break yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder who's going to... Uh, is it like... Is Mark just going to do it to you for defending Pokemon? Um, or just revenge for Tunic when I do yeah. it to Tunic? <laughs> possibly. Possibly. Or maybe do it to a game you're about to talk about. Maybe. Ooh. Ooh. 